Hi guys, I'm super excited to bring you another vlog on my YouTube channel. So this vlog, um, I caught up with Latman, he's a fish farmer in Accra and he's making it, he's crashing it big time. So Latman shares some important tips if you are now thinking of venturing into fish farming. If you're already into fish farming and you are struggling, Latman has some important tips for you and we also got to know some of the inventions and the innovations he has come up with and some of the best tips you can ever get from any fish farmer he's a successful one and i hope you learn a thing or two from this vlog make sure you hit the subscribe button i hope you enjoy this video today at your house yeah are you ready to show us around yes i'm ready to show you okay. so your name uh, my name is Gabriel Latte, yeah. aka Latman. Yeah, Latman, that's all. Latman, and then the, the farm runs with Latman as well. Latman. Yeah, so a lot of people know us by Latman Farms. Why, why Latman in the first place? Oh, so Latman, Latman is actually my dad's nickname. Oh, okay. Yes, and um, I, I wanted to honor my dad before he died. Wow. So I had a business I was running that was a shoe manufacturing business. Wow. And then um, I shoemaker. <laughs> something like that so <laughs> so what we did was uh, we had companies outside that uh, we gave them designs mm. and then they'll produce the the designs wow. for us and then we give them out to people by selling them exactly mm. so i asked him can i use the name last man he was like yes and then quickly exactly so he was actually um, into building construction mm -hmm. yes and, and then you were into shoes yes and then you stole the name from your dad you <laughs> i asked him. for permission <laughs> and he gave me so that's right so your, your educational background so i went to lagon mm -hmm. uh university of ghana oh. proud v mate i studied uh, uh, theater arts and then study of religions and so that was uh you what should I have studied. become a pastor why did you decide to go into fish farming uh, uh, so um, my fish farming journey kick started as a result of uh, being a bit depressed. Uh -huh. So yes, so I was depressed. Uh, nothing was really going on in my life at a point in time. You know, you were you were doing shoe business. You were still making money, but still there was something missing. Yeah. Something really missing. So um, someone came to visit me, checked out my place, and then saw that I had a pond just lying there. We were not using the pond for anything. Initially, wanted to try tilapia, but then uh, they didn't survive because of lack of experience. Okay. And so I said, okay, put in some fingerlings and then... Divert to fish farming. Exactly, right? exactly. Wow. Yeah, so today, what we intend doing here is that we intend to find out from Latma since he's been... How, how many years has it been now? I'll say over a year. Over a year? Yeah, wow. over a year. In, how many farms? Uh, I've set up about 30 farms across. Mm -hmm. um, fish farms? Fish farms, catfish precisely. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea is to um, help people to set up some backyard farms okay. and then some to, to set up bigger farms, like commercial farms. Okay. So that's basically what I do. So like, let's say you have a small space in your house and you don't really know what to do with it. The, the space. Then we make yes. good use of it. Turn it into a fish farm. Exactly. So guys, so today we are here to get some tips from him and find out how he's been able to be successful within a year. You were on CNN. How Very did soon. CNN discover you? Actually, they discovered me April or May 2021. Mm. And um, so the journalists reached out to me that um, they are going to be doing a program on uh, fish farming in Ghana. Okay. And so they want to come and then take a look at what I do. But prior to that, I had done a YouTube video mm -hmm. with uh, Charles Entry, and uh, that video was actually blowing up. Shout out to Charles Entry. Yeah, that, right. that guy is very good. And so I think they watched that video and then they reached out to me. The guy called me straight from my phone. Hello, uh, can we talk? And uh, he asked me some few questions and then I answered. So when I came back home then, I didn't know it was CNN. Wow. I still didn't know it was CNN. He told me he's from, he's from, he's a journalist from one of the uh, media, outlets. media out outlets in France. Wow. So I didn't think CNN at all. So a few days for the, to the shoot and then they told me that, okay, so it's CNN. Imagine if, if he had rejected because he's just a regular journalist from France. Truth be told that uh, I, I, I really was actually busy looking for money somewhere. So like my mind was like, it was later, later, later. He told me, okay, so this is CNN Focus on Africa. I was like, and then you knew that you I was made like, it. I was like, wow, <laughs> you made it. I was like, wow, I was like, wow. You knew so, that you've made it. No, we are still in the process. We are still oh, so in the after process. CNN, have you seen some progress? Yeah, I've seen a lot of progress. Um, before 
I, when I started the farm, I didn't have processing facility. I didn't mm. have a lot of these leverages around. I didn't, I hadn't set up a lot of farms. I hadn't sold a lot of fishes. And then after CNN to uh, GTV also came around and it was a live television program on, uh, I think, the breakfast show. Yeah. And then they also featured me. And then there were some nice comments as well after Success that. Success so. story. So we'll be looking, we'll be going to the pond to see um, the fishes. But you said you were doing something with this before yeah. we go to the fishes. So, um, so um, when it comes to fish farming, there are different, different setups. There are yeah. the plastic ponds, the tarpaulin ponds, the ethane ponds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so and then the concrete ponds. So in my farm, I have the plastics, that is the square tanks, the round tanks, and they form the plastics. And then we have the concrete pond. And then this is the tarpaulin pond. Okay. So this tarpaulin pond. The normal tarpaulin that used to cover cars. No, 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 no. Right. So we look for a certain level of thickness mm -hmm. because of uh, it's going to hold a lot of water. And then also we're looking for a certain level of uh, durability. Okay. And so this particular tarpaulin is supposed to house um, thousand uh, catfishes within the space of six months. So it's a project that um, I'm supposed to work on, build filtration systems and other stuff for it, and then um, that's it. You want to run a fish kind of like a species that is um, strong, resilient, and then also uh, they are not going to cause you a lot of problems. Like their demands are not that high. So that's why I opted for catfish. Initially, I wanted to think about the tilapia and the rest, but then catfishes, they don't stress. Let me ask you, so how long does it take to get a fish as big as this? So um, I'm sure they were just fingerlings. Yeah, so um, normally when you buy from um, those who produce the fingerlings, I do produce fingerlings. I, I help other farmers by giving them fingerlings as well. Now with the fingerlings, what we do is you take the fingerlings, they're about six weeks old. Six weeks old, they are fingerlings, so definitely finger Very size. Small. Exactly. So these guys, uh, normally you want them to be in your system for like six months. Okay. If they are in your system for more than six months, then two things. Either you are running a hatchery, or you, your market wants something bigger. Mm. The reason is that the market wants at least a one kg size of catfish. One kg is what we see here. No, these guys are way, way, way. These guys are way, way more than. So uh, the last time I checked, some of them were around three kg, two point five kg. Now let's go to the um, how 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 do you make sure they survive? Because they are here, you can see the water is green. The water is green, the water is very low as well. So there are different, different things in fish farming you need to note. So um, most of the time, fishes need space. They need to be able to be freely move. So when we say that we are looking at stocking density, in which space, how many fishes should go inside? You need to take note of that. It helps you a lot when anything goes wrong in your farm. And then two is they need oxygen. They need enough feed, so good nutritional content. Mm -hmm. They need a good pH. So the water shouldn't be too acidic. Yeah. To be able to do that, currently what we do in Ghana is most of these um, um, urban fish farmers, in a system like this, we change the water every two days. So you change this water every day? So it depends. So if you are testing your system, so with this water, it's green because there is algae in the water. What's algae? So uh, algae are organisms, microorganisms that you cannot necessarily okay. see them with our eyes. Okay. And um, they are also like kind of like they have their plant activity as well. So photosynthesis goes on. So that's why you have the water being green. Yeah. What they also do is they also, to some extent, um, convert a bit of uh, the, the ammonia that the fishes bring out. Two is, um, in my farm, I use uh, water, the general uh, Ghana water, yeah. uh, kind of water. So what you do is, normally you know that they treat this water with um, yeah. alum, chlorine and stuff like that. So you have to, if you want to use that kind of water for your system, you have to dechlorinate the water. Okay. And you do that by having a poly tank, put water inside, give, allow it to settle for like some three, four days. Then you move. The sun will dechlorinate it then for you. you. Transfer that then water. you can give that water to the fish. Why is it not full? Someone will ask, why is it not full? Good. Now with this level of water, you can't give tilapia this level of water. The reason why I, I'm showing you what I'm showing you now is this. Catfishes have um, one, that, that ability that makes you to be able to breathe yeah. whilst you're not in water. Yeah. They have that, that ability yeah. as well. Yeah. So they don't necessarily need too much water, but to then survive. they'll be able to still live at a, for a very long time as well. But then uh, when we are running commercial farms and stuff like that, the moment you are done with this particular video, I have to just give them back their water to uh, a seemingly very high 
So uh, when you're giving them the water up to the level, I assume it to be on the the green line. The, the, green line at the top. Uh, yes. I see this dogs. setup. Okay. Um, what what is this? We are done with this one, guys. All right. So um, yeah. so um, the first one you saw was a concrete tank. This yeah. is a square tank. Now oh. most of the smaller setups that uh, we we make people build, they are smaller tanks like this. This is a thousand liter tank. You put a maximum of hundred fishes in there, and then these How ones. Many fishes are you? You put a maximum of 100 fishes in there. Fishes. Exactly. So what you do is anytime you lose any fish, then you deduct from your your record book. And then you know how many fishes are inside and how many fishes are lost. So um, that is that with this setup. So with this setup, normally, if you, if you don't have the tank already, maybe you have to buy the tank. But apart from that, the fishes and then their feed is no more than 800 cities. Yes. Because... To get this done. I mean, if you have your tank already, I'm talking about fingerlings and feed. And feed. Yeah. Pen. Them, yeah. And they are going to, so that's for the entire six months period. And you have your fishes being more than a kg. Most of the time is around 1.3, 1.4. Depending on how regular you change your water and other few factors that normally we tell people and we train them. Oh. You have your fishes sometimes even being as big as 2 kg. So can, can someone chew this? Yes, so um, it dep so the, the markets are different. The market demands are different. Some of the markets, they want smaller fishes. Most of that, I would say that it's with respect to the smoked fishes. Okay. They like it small. And then with the grilled fishes, they like it big. big. But there, there are a few people as well who like the, the smoked fishes big. It looks presentable Let me tell you something prestigious. about grilled fishes. Grilled fishes can do things um, for girls that sugar daddies can do. <laughs> I never knew. <laughs> I never knew. Okay, so... Um, this is their feed. Okay. So this, this feed, one. Yeah, this but feed. But there are two. Yes. So uh, these ones are for these guys, and then the other ones, the are, for ones the, are for the exactly bigger guys. the bigger guys. So what you do is you don't put everything inside. Other than that, everything. they'll do two. No, they don't really eat. You want that activity. So watch me. What I do is I I spread it like this. Then you wait for some time. Make sure they've consumed about eighty percent of this. Because this is the first, the first feeding I'm giving them today. And they know. Yeah. They know that it's food. Yeah, they know it's, it's feed. So they have something like a whiskers on their mouth. Uh, it's yeah. called barbells. And uh, uh, it helps them to detect taste and other things. You understand? So, yeah. So, so, so what we do is this. You're supposed to sometimes sort out your fishes so that the bigger guys will not Mafia, the, yeah, mafia. That's mafia. The smaller ones. You have to so, take this guy out. So you, so what we do is, um, in 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 a bigger setup like um, any of these ones, what we do is we have other smaller tanks. Yeah. So we, the smaller ones will be in those tanks, the bigger ones, okay. and then you grade them as well. Okay. And um, when you are marketing and you are doing this kind of business, when you are able to grade your fishes well, you save a lot of time, money, and then also people know that you are serious with what you are doing. Exactly. So you have graded them. So um, with these guys, with these guys, I these guys are different from these guys. These guys are way bigger than these guys, and then these guys. But then there was a last tank. I harvested everything in there, and then um, so what we do is like we do a lot of uh, harvesting and sell, and then also what we do is uh, we also make some of our farmers also bring us some of some fishes, to also give to other people as well to help the market. You will so, surely see this. So, so yes. So you feed feed these guys. I had some before I feed them, I had something about timing in feeding. Exactly. So um so example like if I am feeding them nine AM I yeah. should constantly feed them around nine AM. Reason being it's around nine AM they'll come waiting for their their food. Okay. So if they come around nine AM just make sure that you are giving them when it happens like that they, they become ready Conscious. for exactly and then also you don't have issues or maybe someone is not eating because you are having different different times yeah. and stuff like that so uh, so normally what i do is what i do is so there are different there are changes that happens with respect to um uh, environment mm -hmm. when the weather is cooler they won't really eat when the weather is hotter they are able to eat well and more and they're able to break down more i still say it depends on what's going on and if you do a lot of testing in your farm you'll find the very best at times for you to be able to feed your fishes what I say is every farm is different okay. because of the environment. Even when you are building a farm, it's different. Specifications yes. are different. Environment is different. So when you understand all of these things, too, you are able to uh, maximize. Because there are some farms when the weather is cold, you feel they will not eat. Can human beings eat this? Um, 
I've, I've not tried eating it before, <laughs> but it's made out from some fish meal, wheat, soya bean, and among other. Okay, so this is the only food they eat. Yes, you I give them. It's pizza. No, 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 no. no. I've, heard, I've, heard, I've heard some people giving their fishes banku and um, um, uh, fufu and bread and i don't do that if you're running a commercial <laughs> farm you 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 don't do certain things okay but if it's even if it's a hobby still you don't okay. so let's feed these guys and let's go to the next so let's feed them and let's see what, how i do with the feeding so more let's go more more in fact pour everything inside but then start it yeah Exactly. So we are done with these guys. Guys, school feeding program. So these guys, in about two months, when you come, you will not recognize that these are the guys you saw here. I'll be back in two months. <laughs> in fact, in two weeks, I'll be back. Exactly. So guys, let's see. You see, these ones are bigger than the other ones. Yeah, they are bigger than the other yeah, ones. They are bigger than the other ones. So, with these guys... Uh, <laughs> And let me ask you a question. Yeah. Isn't this therapeutic? Like being able to watch fishes eat yeah, like I mean, this. It's, it's nice. nice. It's nice. This is what the rich people do. It, it, it gives a good feeling. Like, exactly. To see how they are struggling for their food. So, so, so when I was battling with depression, I come and then spend a lot of time around them. The first time I brought my fishes, I think like for the for like a month, I would come sit down around the farm for a very long time. It's exciting. Exactly. It's exciting. And now uh, I'm making money of them. So. Let's talk about money. What do you do? I don't sell too much of the fresh fish. Why would you sell a fish for 20 or 25 cities when you can sell it for 50 cities by just tweaking one or two things? If, if you are banking, if you are a banker and they pay you around 1,000 cities, 1,500 cities, you work for a company, they pay you 1,000 cities, 1,500 cities, and you think fishing doesn't pay, this should uh, uh, actually change your mind, okay? Now let's do the maths. Fresh fish, yeah, one kg. One kg. These guys weigh about three kg. Yes. So this guy is we are not, talking, we are not we are talking about basic setup. Something like this. And then with this setup, most of the time, most of these guys are above one kg. Normally they are around uh, one point five. As I, as I was 1.5 saying. kg could sell more than 20 cities. Exactly, exactly. So uh, if every um, 1 kg is 20 cities, then 1.5 is 30 cities. And then that progression. Nice. So that's for the fresh fish. Yeah, and then the smoked fish, I sell for 30, 35, depending that's on the it. size. Okay. And then the grilled fish with banku, I sell for just 50 Ghana cities. So you sell with the banku? Yeah, I sell with the banku. Where? Amazing story. I sell in my house. So people come and buy the bank. So what I do is um, on on Saturdays and then holidays, um, I have groups of people who come around. They sit in groups and then they, they buy and then they eat. So what I do is, um, let's say, how, you have some friends. Yeah. I'll tell you, um, for a table, you should be five guys, each person 50 cities. And then I do the grilling around 1 p.m., 3 p.m., and then 5 p.m. So with the grilled fish, sometimes, so we book people morning, afternoon, evening. So we know that we are, we are supposed to smoke 15 fishes. Or, and you smoke these ones. Exactly. Uh, um, I mean grill. Yeah. Then we grill we these grill, guys. We grill these ones. These guys. So um, sometimes you can make it uh, like a thousand. Thousand cities. Yes. <laughs> guys, you, you make process a, of men. You, you make a thousand by deduction of your uh, a thousand, then maybe you deduct your cost of production. Yeah. So like that includes uh, the fish, the fish and the banku and everything. So in a day, your net profit is thousand. That if your father wants to introduce the eleven, you should be talking to this guy. Yeah. Okay. Hi <laughs> <laughs> yeah. guys. So well, you've seen the fishes, the pond, and everything. You are going to expose us in um, factory, uh, factory. Yeah. So. Mm. So this, this place is actually a 15 by 15 uh, feet. Okay. It was also a place in the house we were not necessarily using. So I got some money uh, and then I decided to put up this facility. But then to be able to put up this facility, I needed to do some water consultations. I went to the post service department, had some interactions with them. They, they actually helped me with the flow chart for me to be able to put up this place. Reason being is we got some people demanding for our fishes outside Ghana. Okay. And uh, we have to go through the right ex process. Exactly. So that when we are exporting, we know that we are exporting yeah. um, well. So then we were able to put up uh, this nice place. Mind you, please, the place is still under construction. Yeah. Everything. So when you enter, there's a, there's a flow chart kind of way. So you want things to move in a linear kind of mm. setting. You don't want cross-contamination. Okay. 
so as, as, as i was saying the place is still a work in progress mm -hmm. so when you receive your raw materials that is your fish yeah when you come here you are supposed to have a cabinet over here where okay. you weigh your fish you weigh them you clean them you degut them whatever thing you want to do to them then there's the hand washing station where you wash, wash your hands. and then um, this is the skill that, so then this is the skill then from there now the most important thing in this place is this guy and this guy is what we call the Anhoto Obin. So, Anhoto. Uh, yeah, Anhoto. Ebema was Anhoto, baby. So, the thing is, um, this oven was actually a project under the USAID. And um, they wanted to help with, uh, with sustainable uh, fish farming across Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so, they came up with this. So, this is an improvement of the old one, the Choco Smoker. Okay. So, so for those of you who don't know the Choco Smoker, that's it on your on the screen. Okay. The reason why they brought this up was um, a lot of issues were coming up through the production of fish. Mm. One is um, those who produce the fishes, yeah. as a result of the smokes that come out, um, it exposes their body to cancer. Oh, wow. And then also, Smoking. yeah, exactly. And then also, um, with the fishes we also uh, produce as well, the fishes... When with the, using the chocolate smoker, what happens is uh, you have a lot of the liquids from the fish going back into the fire. And then when that happens, what happens is this, um, the smoke will also go back onto the fish. The fishes will absorb these mm. uh, compounds. And so um, when you're exporting, they expect that your fishes to have, they call it PAH. It's called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. As I said, <laughs> take your pen and paper, okay? Because this is a free lecture. You won't get it anywhere. pH. Yeah, so so they look for a certain range of the pH, and then it has been proved that this particular system is able to give you the acceptable wow. range. Other than that, you cannot though they will bounce you. Okay. You they'll can't bounce spots. No. Fish. So um, we did we did some tests from our place, take it to the lab for them to do whatever checks they want to do. But there's the liquid from your fishes. Yeah. And then you can harvest the liquid. Now, the liquids are high in omega-3 and other uh, nutrients that you can use for your fertilizer and stuff like that. Okay. So, this one will do that. And it will prevent the liquid from entering back into your system. And it's made of uh, 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 bricks and a yeah, few other, other things. Now, if you are smoking the smaller guys that I showed you, yeah. or ones uh, quite bigger than that, you can smoke like 700 at a go. And in the 700, the, what you are doing is you can smoke in about two or three days. So I do my smoking for three days because okay. I'm looking for 10% moisture so that the fishes can last longer. Okay. Exactly. So that is what you do. This guy knows what he's about. I mean, this, you will get this knowledge anywhere. So with this kind of system, um, when we look at this thing like this, so yeah. let's just say there is fire under this. Mm -hmm. When you find the smoke will actually come out from there, so the smoke doesn't go to the fishes. And then, uh, so this is where you are trying to trap the heat. So in this system, you don't need to be turning your fishes like, no. Just it's, cool. It's just be there. That's why they call just it. There. That's why it's a what? Ahoto. Mm -hmm. So you have that. So if we take off this. Wow. So you can see that I have some smoke fishes here. So with this one like this, what happens is the, f the ones at the top, you just have to change the positioning yeah. and then you are good to go. But the heat is trapped inside the whole thing and then you have uh, your fishes so uh, being what, evenly cooked. What you see here is what is beneath. Exactly. But then now what I did on this is this. Because I wanted... Uh, so there's a level of... Uh, you want to protect your system from rust yeah. and a few other small things. So what you do is uh, you put some of the wood ash from what you are doing. So it's more or less like a zero waste kind of concept where every waste is being made use of. Yeah. So the waste that comes so out from your, your firewood, you put them on this to harvest the liquid. Then you can use for your fertilizer for plants. So this, I'm assuming this is 1.5K. Exactly. Wow, guys, I'm becoming a fish expert. So also um, with um, better ways of uh, farming, we save more money. Yeah. Um, so. I said 15 cities, in actual sense, around 10 cities. 10 cities? Yes. Reason being is, um, so my fishes, let's say I get a fingerlings for like um, one city, 50 pesos. Yeah. After one city, 50 pesos, I need to feed that number of fish. So let's say if there are 1,000 fishes, 
I get my fingerlings for 1,005. Yeah. The total feed is no more than 6,500 as it stands today. And so then you add your water and then other petty, petty expenses. So most of the farms that we set up, their operational expense is not above, um, is not above 12,000 cities thereabouts. And so if it, some people too have boreholes already and stuff like that. So those people are actually making a lot of money in this particular kind of business. So if it's 12 cities and you're selling fresh for, for 20 cities, you are making eight cities. Eight cities profit. If you are if you are selling for uh, for thirty cities, thirty cities, then you are making mm -hmm. about twenty something cities. Yes. Please don't, don't kill us. So guys, that's it there. Today we visited um, Latman Farms. Okay, I'm sure very soon you will not just have Latman Farms. You have Latman Group of Companies <laughs> where you have distribution, uh, everything, even a restaurant, cartage, yeah, exa restaurant, exactly. point and kill. You can come and point and then he kills for you. I, I believe very soon we'll be having that. We'll be back in two weeks. Okay. You okay. said you have um, a project. So, 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 um, as part of the sustainable ways of farming, we realized that what if, what if we can save more water? What if we can save a lot of things? So, what are we looking at? So, there's a concept known as the aquaponics, and it's very promising. It's, it's a concept that has been going on for quite some time now. Uh, this particular information I'm giving to you is. Premium. Exactly. In this particular system, what you are doing is you are running a fish farm, but you are running it like an aquarium. So what happens is the water is still in. You don't flush out your water. Okay. What you do is you build filters for it, which I know how to build. And so you build some filters for it. My farm is running on solar. So the solar pumps and the solar air compressor. So there'll be enough oxygen in there every oh, single time. See it. And then after the whole system, that is the, from the pond, to the filtration systems, then there's an amazing thing where you have some leafy greens. So we are looking at lettuce. The lettuce will also absorb the nutrients from the water, and then the water goes back into the fish system. So what happens is this: at the end of the day, you are producing fish, you are producing vegetables, yeah. and you are saving a lot of money and time. Two troubles. One well, this was only two troubles. One god. This is two money making avenues from one god last month. <laughs> okay, so guys, you have a YouTube channel. Yeah, so uh, Blackman Farms is um, our YouTube channel. It's um, yet to we are yet to post some videos you over should. there, but we've done a lot of production. Yeah, then... so subscribe to Latman Farms. Okay, Thank you. I'm talking to you. Subscribe Thank you. to Latman Farms. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, just as you subscribe to all my channels. And also, as part of our initiatives, uh, we are looking at having a lot of younger people coming in to. Um, to make this whole thing a big deal. So people come around. Yeah. So I've had more than 300 people coming around. We sit down, we talk, we discuss, what do you want to do? And uh, for most of the time, what we try as much as possible is, if we have a setup for you, we try as much as possible to help you as well with some marketing and tips and stuff like that to help you. So that it's not like you've just built a farm for building yeah, yeah. farm sake, no. And then also we tell people to try as much as possible to put in their experiences in life. So maybe you're a banker, you would know how to run this particular kind of business yeah. aside the normal or regular farm aspect. Also, we run some few trainings as well. And I, the idea is to help people because Charlie, Ghana... The system hard. The, the, <laughs> the system hard. Uh, your social media uh, handles. All right, so um, on Facebook is Gabriel Latte for me. Uh, but then on uh, or across all social media, we use the Latman Farms. The Latman so Farms. for on Twitter, on um, Instagram, when you go there, Latman Farms, you see us over there. Exactly. Latman is L E R T M A N. Latman Farms. You know how to spell farms. So make sure you follow on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Thanks for staying with us. Thank you very much. Yeah.